What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another twin motion tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the exterior lighting settings and how you can use those to create realistic images inside of twin motion. Um, so let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is a model that I've downloaded from the 3D warehouse and you can download this and follow along if you want to. Um, I'm not going to try to say the name of this one, but it's a great model with some great trees and everything else um, that we've imported into twin motion after saving this as a sketchup file so you can download this file by Andy Didich to follow along so um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at some of the lighting settings contained inside of twin motion and how you can use those to affect your renderings and so specifically in this video we're gonna talk about the sunlight settings the environment settings and things like that and how you can use them to light your model in the next video we'll talk more about interior and artificial lighting and uh, how you can use those as well so you can see how I've brought this model in and then I've made some changes I've applied I've added some plants and stuff like that just enough to kind of give us a scene that we can work with and so the first thing I want to talk about is your time of day inside of your renderings and how you can change that so you can adjust um, your time of day by going up and clicking in this little eye right here and then there's a button that looks like a Sun and you can use that by dragging this up and down to adjust your time of day and you can see how when I adjust to my time of day that's also adjusting how the shadows are being cast inside of this model so this is kind of mimicking the way that lighting acts in real life where you'd have different shadows at different times of the day and so one concept I want to cover a little bit and we'll talk more about this in a minute is be just because you adjust your lighting settings inside of your working view here does not mean they're going to show up inside of your renders. So you can adjust your lighting settings in this view, but then when you finally want to do this for real for your renders, you're going to need to go down into your media mode and inside your image, your lighting settings are going to live inside of that image. So each one of these images, for example, has a different um, set of lighting things associated with it. So when you do your final render, you're going to come in here and you're going to adjust this um, to save that as a part of that image. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit, but I just wanted to give you kind of the heads up on that one. So what I want to do is I want to go through and I want to talk about um, the lighting settings in your model. And so to start off, we're going to talk about the um, nature settings because a lot of your lighting settings are going to be contained in there because you're changing the lighting that's coming from your your environment and so let's just kind of walk through these one by one and I'll give you an idea of what each one of them does so first off let's talk a little bit about the localization so what the localization is going to do is that's going to allow you to set an actual geographical area so for me I'm in Colorado so if my model was going to be in Colorado you can see how I can move this to a different geographical area and this is actually going to simulate what the lighting would look like if your model was located in that location so you can do this by location specific settings you can also come in here and you can adjust this um, you can adjust your north offset so that's going to affect the direction that north is inside of your model and you can see how by changing what north is inside of your model that's also going to change the direction in which the lighting is cast and then you can also set this to cast the lighting based on different months of the year because as you know in different months of the year lighting is cast differently because the sun's in different locations so you can use this to kind of approximate that and also if you if you don't have a real world location and you just want to adjust the way your shadows are cast you can use this in order to do that as well so that's your localization settings and I will note you can set all of this for each individual image as well so now let's talk a little bit about your weather settings so your weather settings are going to affect the way that your lighting is cast inside of your model because you can affect if there are clouds or not inside of your rendering so like for example if you go into your weather settings and you drag this all the way to the left you can see how you don't have any clouds in the sky and your Sun is just kind of shining like normal you can see how as I drag this to the right, this starts to add clouds to your sky. Well, notice at a certain point, um, not only does this add clouds to your sky, it starts affecting your lighting inside of your model. And the reason for that is because the clouds are starting to block the sunlight 
in here. So you can see how the more clouds I have in here, the less the sunlight is getting through and the dimmer my image is. And that doesn't mean that you have to have dim images inside of here if you create like a rainy view or something like that. There's definitely lighting settings that you can adjust in order to brighten that up, which we might talk about in another video. But you're going to notice that the less clouds we have, the brighter my sun is going to shine inside of my image. So if your image is coming out like this and you can't really figure out why, so if it's like super dark or something like that and you've got a bunch of clouds, your clouds are probably blocking your sunlight and that's something that's worth looking into. Um, we're going to go ahead and drag this back over here. Um, so the weather is going to affect the way the light is cast, but most of your lighting changes are going to be made inside of the lighting menu right here in your nature settings. So you can see how this has a number of different settings in here of things that are going to affect the way that your lighting acts inside of your model. So obviously the sun that's going to be the simplest one. You can see how the more you drag this up, the brighter your sunlight's going to be. The more you drag it down, the less bright your sun is going to be. So if I drag that down to zero, my sun isn't really shining on any of these surfaces. And so you can use this to adjust the brightness of the sun that's being applied inside of your model. And really what that's going to affect is that's going to affect the areas where the sunlight is directly shining. And I will note there's a setting in here to adjust the reflection and how much that light is reflected inside of your model. So um, you, you can kind of play around with that until you get the effect that you like coming off of your materials and things like that. So the ambient lighting, um, you're going to notice that the ambient lighting is really, it's affecting the overall lighting inside of your model, but specifically if we were to look at this side of our building, there we go, this side of our building over here, you can see how the sun's not shining directly on that face. So when I adjust the sun settings up and down, you can see how the brightness of these faces in here isn't really being affected because the sun isn't shining on those directly. However, if you click and drag this ambient light, you can see how that's going to kind of bring up the overall lighting in your scene, which is affecting the brightness of faces like this one where the sun isn't directly affecting them. So like for example, if you if you have this image and you have a whole bunch of like really dark areas that are like super dark and they don't really look very good and no matter what you do with your sun they're still dark kind of like this um, what you need to do is you need to go in and look at your ambient lighting because if you bring this up you can see how you can bring the uh, brightness of these faces that the sun isn't directly shining on up in order to affect that um, white balance is going to affect the color temperature in your model. So a higher color temperature is going to have more like yellows and things like that. A lower color temperature is going to have more blues. And uh, this is kind of like if you go out and you buy a light bulb. Um, a lot of light bulbs have the color temperature that they uh, that they emit on the side of the bulb. And so if you get something with a lower color temperature, you're gonna get this bluer color. A higher color temperature, you're gonna get more of a yellow color. And so you can use this to kind of affect the mood of your renderings. So usually I tend a little bit towards the more blue colors. A lot of people like them with a lot more like oranges and yellows and things like that. It's kind of a preference thing in whatever you're trying to do with your scene. So GI is gonna be your global illumination setting and what your global illumination setting is going to do is that's going to affect how the light how the light acts after it bounces and so what that means is um, the more you turn your GI up the more areas are going to be lit in areas where light would have to bounce to get to them so like for example or in areas where the light bounces around so this really affects your interior sections more than your exteriors so like for example if I drag this all the way down you're gonna notice that all of these areas that are interior are a lot dimmer that's because your light is just kinda going in there but it's not really bouncing around and lighting the area and that's kinda how light acts so if you need to get more lighting inside of these areas you might want to consider turning this up you can see how these areas inside your building are going to get brighter the higher your GI setting is. So if you've got a room like this one and you can't figure out why it's super dim, consider adjusting this GI setting up in order to get more lighting into that space. So moon power is just going to affect if you have more of a night scene, you'll get more lighting off your moon. So like for example, let's take this to nighttime and then if we drag our moon power up, you can see how I'm still getting lighting coming off of that moon to light my scene. So this is something that's really going to kind of affect more your... Uh, 
it's really going to affect more your night scenes than anything else but you can see how you can adjust this in order to still be able to create kind of a night render in here and you can also adjust like the phases of the moon and the intensity of the stars and how bright those are going to be using this slider that's in here as well um, but you can use this to create your night scenes so let's go back to our daytime view and I think we we're around 9 a.m. something like that I'm trying to keep this where my shadows are a little bit interesting I like to use my shadows to kind of break up spaces like this paving um, otherwise they look uniform and they don't really look very realistic um, but the shadow setting let's take a look at that one and specifically take a look at these shadows on the ground so this setting is going to affect how defined your shadows are or how sharp your shadows are so if you turn this way down you can see how you get really sharp edges and at this point this is even kind of cutting off this shadow you can see how the higher up you drag this the softer the edges around your shadows are going to be so I like to have a little bit of definition on my shadows but maybe not so much that they just look like they've been drawn on there with like a pen or something like that um, but you can use this to generate that effect so shadow bias we're not going to worry about too much you shouldn't have to do too much with the shadow bias unless you start getting these artifacts in here where these are like diagonal lines that are being cast on this face so really that's I think the only time you're gonna mess around with your shadow bias is if you get these diagonal artifacts just drag your shadow bias up and those should go away ambient occlusion is going to be used to create an effect that darkens your corners and your edges so if you pay attention to some of your darker corners in here you can see how the higher my ambient occlusion is the more you're getting kind of a shadow effect around your corners and edges so it's kind of a subtle effect and it kind of depends on what you're going for but you can use this to kind of adjust that the way that that's acting around some of these corners and creases and other features like that so now let's talk just a little bit about how we would take these and apply these to an image in order to generate a full-on rendering so like let's say for example that we wanted to use this view and create a rendering from this this view what you would do is you would go down into your media settings and what we would do is we would create an image this is going to be a saved image that we're going to use for our rendering and so remember the lighting settings that you select are going to be set inside of this the settings specific to this image so like for example for this image I could set my time by using this slider just like this so I could use this to slide this up and let's say we wanted this to be like a 9:45 a.m. or something like that um, you could go ahead and set that and you can actually type that time in here but now we would go into the more settings and we would set all of those lighting settings that we talked about before so like for example your localization this is where you would set your north offset so you could come in here and you could adjust your north offset specific to this image um, and then you could set your weather settings so this is going to be stored inside of that image and let's say we wanted our weather settings to be or we wanted this image to be have clouds kind of like this and what I want to do is I want to take this and generate kind of a darker face in here because I want to show you how to adjust that with the settings so you can see how let's say I wanted exactly this amount of clouds and this is making this a little bit dimmer well, what we could do is then we could go into our lighting settings and adjust that so we could turn our sunlight back up and we could also turn our ambient light up or down to get all of these areas like our shadows to give them a little bit more contrast so let's say I wanted my shadows to be more contrasty I could drag them down if I wanted it to be a little bit brighter I could drag my ambient light up but you could use that to adjust this and then you could come in here and set your GI to something like 1.25 or maybe 1 or maybe something even lower than that so that we get a little contrast with this image right here but you can see how you set all of these inside of your image settings until you get kind of the look that you're going for and then once you get that look we're not really going to worry about these other settings right here you would go in and you would go to your export settings your export settings are going to allow you to take that image so in this case this is going to be image 04 that's the image that we set up inside our images and in your export settings you can just click the button for start export when you export this just go find the folder where you want to export this image and click select folder and that'll export that as an image and so if I pull that image up 
you can see how this is my final image that gets created and rendered based on what was shown in here. And so you can see how we were able to adjust these different lighting settings. And you could obviously go back in and tweak these, really do whatever you want with it. I probably need to add some grass in here and kind of block this texture right here. You can see how once you get an idea of how those lighting settings work, it's pretty easy to adjust this to really kind of get the effect that you're looking for inside of Twin Motion. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Have you found any useful tips for working with lighting in Twin Motion? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.